Hey everybody, I'm Brian Hogue. Welcome again to Chiller Chat. Tonight, we're going to be talking with Jennifer Sadler. So, Jennifer, thanks for being on the show. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of the, uh, a lot of you may know, I, we have a book that came out, Chiller Night, The Spirit of Halloween, and Jennifer authored the book, and that came out uh, a couple years ago. Yeah. But I remember, uh, well, we'll get to the book, but, but before we do that, uh, we were talking beforehand, and I've known you for, for several years now, but uh, you used to work, I find this so interesting, you used to work for West End Games. Yep. And you've done work for TSR. Uh, recently, yes. Uh -huh. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Um, from 1996 on, I've been working in uh, role-playing games. I've worked for, starting with West End Games, I actually was hired right on right out of college, which was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And um, we jumped right in doing uh, editing and proofreading. And uh, gradually I became a creative director and was able to manage my own lines and put in my own stuff, which was great. I worked for uh, Star Wars and then they had a paranoia role playing game. They were working on Men in Black and I did some editing there and then uh, Hercules and Xena, which was a lot of fun back then. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a lot of fun putting together stories for them and doing role-playing games and you know doing the stats and coming up with different ideas and when West End Games folded we were kind of all thrown into a chaotic swirl where we wandered around the countryside quite literally and some of us ended up in different places and I ended up doing freelancing. I started working for role-playing games via the internet which is really just a great way to go because I never have to leave my house ever again. We, you just said something that made me think. Where were you, now where were you located? West we were Games? located in Honesdale, Pennsylvania, which is above oh. Scranton. Okay. And uh, that's where he had, uh, the manager of the company had chosen that location because of where it was an aspect to um, New York City, Scranton, and Chicago. Oh, okay. And that way he could come across and do the conventions, and we did the convention circuit. Now about what year was that? I was hired by them by 1996. Uh, the company has, was around since the late 70s, early 80s, as far as I can tell. He started with war gaming, and he moved on to uh, doing licensing gaming, mm -hmm. which is when you work for people who do movies and, and books and stuff like that, and he just would bring up the worlds and create new settings for them so that people could continue playing in those realms. And what was your role in, in making the, uh, the Star Wars games? Were you... Uh... I started out proofreading, a lot of proofreading, because they had a very established writers and editors in that. Okay. And um, there's an approval process with Lucasfilm. So I started out proofreading, and then eventually I was able to put in small bits, mm -hmm. you know, commentary on different weapon systems and, you know, add in my own little... And eventually they gave me my own book. I think I... I did the th uh, third of something called Kraken's Threat Dossier, which was about the final three novels at the time. And I did Personal Gear, and I did an Aliens book, which had all the aliens that had ever, they had ever come up with up until 1997. Aliens from, from the movie Aliens? Or? Movies, the books, the comic books from the okay. 1970s. I went through all of them, and we just came up with every single alien we could find. Huh. And it was great. <laughs> and it was called Alien Encounters. Well, now, West End Games, that was, um, there was, of course, everybody, I'm, I'm sure, would know uh, TSR. They did the they, Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons. Dragons they, and yep, a lot of the uh, West End Game people and the TSR people switched on several occasions. Oh, okay. So we ended up, um, we knew, we, I, we, I still know a lot of the people who are at, um, at TSR. Mm -hmm. And, um, but we, yeah, we went back and forth for a while there. And um, just recently I got contacted by TSR and they asked me to um, do uh, some more editing for them. And they said they'll keep in contact with me. So I finally got to say that I work for TSR, the people who made Dungeons and Dragons. That's pretty neat. And they're still around. They're on their fifth edition. Wow. And uh, they're now doing, and they've opened up their license so anybody can borrow their license and use it for a third party book. Okay. And I work with a lot of people um, freelance that actually does fifth edition work in their books and I have to make sure it all you know does it, it all rolls right yeah well now how long have they been around DSR yeah since uh, Gary Gygax um, and Ken Arneson uh, let me say 70s 
70s, okay. Definitely and 70s. Is that what they started out doing, is making Dungeons and Dragons? Was that, was that, was that the purpose of TSR? I can't guarantee I remember the answers, but it se would seem like it, don't you think? Yeah, we can just make it up here. I, I'll just things. make it up, yeah. No, <laughs> they, he had Somebody a vision. Be on the <laughs> <laughs> you are wrong. <laughs> Somebody is wrong on the yeah. internet. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> that doesn't happen. No, um, I honestly, it, I don't remember the story. I, I had the first three original books, and I remember it was 1970s that it, it started. And um, I know that he, the idea of role-playing games, the idea of using dice as a randomizer mm -hmm. is not new. It has not been new for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe the War Gamers started it. Oh, is that right? Okay, yep, and that, that gets fuzzy. See, I always thought the Dungeons you know who and started Dragons... It? It, um, H.G. Wells. There is a book on really? war gaming. I, I actually got a hold of it. It's a book on war no gaming idea. by H.G. Wells, and wow. he actually started the whole idea of war gaming. I'm going to wow. say it's H.G. Wells. Okay, we'll say. <laughs> we'll go with that. So we'll make it here official on Chiller Chat. It's H.G. Wells. <laughs> so um, I, I just I, I think that the idea of of what they did with Dungeons and Dragons. I played it a couple times back in, in high school. I wasn't an avid player, but I mean, I had a, I had a, a good friend of mine who was obsessed with yes. it. He loved it. I think we all have that friend. And, and, yeah, so it's the same through friend. a friend, I, I, you know, he got me to play it a couple times. And I enjoyed it. I thought it was, it was neat because you could just use your imagination in so many ways and, and uh, really got into the story. I remember the movie that came out, um, <laughs> Remember with, the, that, with Tom Hanks? Um, oh my God. <laughs> M Mazes and Monsters yes. or something like that. It was a parody of Dungeons and Dragons and it was to, uh, I guess, I guess uh, show you the, the dangers of uh, we always of wanted to find in, involved in the games. <laughs> we always wanted to find a mass suicide and take a couple of our products and put it underneath the bodies oh, so gee, that sure. we could some sell the, more. <laughs> some of the dice and that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we never got our chance. Yeah. Throw, throw some of the manuals around in the, uh, like the Marshall. Talk about a hit, you know, that, that's an instant hit. Everybody will buy your, just to burn them. And it's like, okay, you know, buy them. True, <laughs> true, you would have that, yeah. Now you have yeah. a plan for your book. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of the book, I, you know, Chiller Night, The Spirit of Halloween, if I could pick it up. Uh, like I said, this was, this was uh, written by Jennifer Sadler. And when I first talked to you about this, mm. Uh, back in 2015, I think it was 15. Um, you said something to me. We we had, we got together. We were talking, and and you said something to me that that I I hadn't thought of before. You said I'm thinking of this as a game I'd like to play, and that always stuck with me. Yeah, I I, I saw it as a world that I could pos yeah. possibly go use later on with dice. Because when I was reading it. I was thinking that, you know, I was thinking about the words you had, you had said, like, oh, this is like a role-playing game. This is like if, the, if you were playing Dungeons and Dragons or something, uh, you, you could kind of navigate through this world. And I thought that was a neat, a neat take of it. Um, I yeah. haven't given up on that plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, Just I need really, a little more money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I really enjoyed this. Um, and it was, it was interesting because you were writing it, about Jack Shadow, a character obviously I'm very, <laughs> very near and dear to, but I thought it was interesting how I'm reading it thinking, oh, I wonder when he's going to show up. I wonder what he's going to say. I wonder what your vision of Jack Shadow was, you know, and we had talked a little bit before, before that. And the only input I really had was just the beginning, the opening, you know, yep. I, I kind of, that was the only, that was the only part of it that I really shared with you. I, I, I wanted to see the uh, the trick or treaters uh, on on the night that they go out and and that world start to to change and there's no real good explanation as to why that is it just something that that happens and maybe that'll maybe <laughs> explored later or, or something but absolutely um, I I thought that that was after that it was basically I wonder what happens next so every time you would send me an, an, an update I'd be like. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> what's he gonna do now? What are the kids gonna do? You know, but uh, what, what was that like to go through that and and, and to write that? Um, it was. I had my ideas that I, I wanted to see. I definitely liked the idea of exploring how kids feel, 
mm -hmm. because the one thing you get out of the Stephen King adolescent books and stuff, you don't get them actually going, this might actually kill me. Because you, you assume that kids don't think about it. And I seem to recall being an early teenager and, oh, I thought about it. You mm -hmm. know, <laughs> a lot of kids are obsessed with it for a while. They're in the, in the 12 to 13 year range. So I wanted them to actually be sitting there going, well, what happens? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? You know, is this going to be it? Yeah. And that fear and that, that blinding, you know, terror that strikes you and can you move past it long enough to try to keep surviving? How, how important is it to survive? Mm -hmm. And how important is it to give up? And you've, you've learned that some people don't handle it. Yeah. Some people shut down and those people may not make it. Yeah. Yeah, well, the, the parts in there, and you, you describe that pretty vividly about the freezing up part, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it, it does make it more real as you're reading it, more relatable, I guess you could right. say. I mean, we don't, we don't all get catapulted into a dim, you know, dark dimension of fear, but, but you can relate to fear. You yes. know, anybody can relate to fear and, and that feeling. Now, it's funny you would say that about, the, you know, um, when you're a kid, you don't think about your, your own mortality, or maybe you do, or maybe some have. I, I never thought about it at the time. I, 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 I'll give you an example. I was on a, uh, my first time I, f I flew out of the country, um, and I just can't imagine having this mindset now, you know. Uh, but back then, I was a teenager yet. I was 18, but I was still, a, a, you know, an adult teenager. And, um, we were coming back from South America, I was coming back from Brazil, and, and we were landing in JFK, New York. That plane, I, I mean, that plane was being thrown around like nothing I'd ever been on uh, before. People were holding hands, people were crying, people were praying, and I'm sitting there, and, and I really, I can t I, sitting there like I am right now, I, I, it never once occurred to me that we might not make it. You know, if that were to happen now, <laughs> I'd be holding hands and praying. And, you know, I, I, I think I, I would probably in, be in that category of people who, who really felt that that was it. And, and I remember when, when the plane did land, everybody just applauded like, like uh, uh, it, it was something like out of a movie. Mm -hmm. It really was. I mean, it, it, and I never realized the danger that we were in. It never occurred to me. You know, so a lot of kids or teenagers, young young adults, even absolutely, it doesn't occur to you. That. But in a situation that you produce, and like, for mm -hmm. example, in this, in the spirit of Halloween, they have to realize it at some point that mm -hmm. this is actually the type of thing you don't get out of, mm -hmm. and it affects, I think, kids differently. I had a similar situation, except I was about fourteen or fifteen. I suddenly realized someday it would be over, mm -hmm. and it hit me so hard I dropped to my knees and freaked out in mm. the middle of my dining room, just absolutely, you know, take the, didn't want to think about it anymore. And yeah. yet it was there in my face and I recovered eventually mm -hmm. and got up and kept going, you know, mm -hmm. cause that's what you do. But yeah, it's got to hit sooner or later mm -hmm. that realization it's going to end. And here where they're basically in a different realm surrounded by, you know, consider we were, we were writing it for an earlier time. Mm -hmm. And that time there would never have been zombies living dead, you know, right. in the way that George Romero we has them presented now, them. Right. Yes. Because the, the, yes, the story takes were. place back in the, the, if the 50s, 50s, I think, early 50s, 50s yeah. Or yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there, there you are. You're sitting there with um, that type of fear. You're surrounded by dead people, and you're, they're telling you, you're, you're it. This is it. You're mm -hmm. done. Th eventually, that's going to hit, and a 12-year-old might not handle it as well as we think that we do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought you did a great job at, at, at doing something that probably a lot of people don't do, and that is bringing realism to it. Yeah. real real feelings. I mean, you described what these kids were, were, were thinking and feeling and, and their reactions and the freezing up, you know. And uh, I thought that was well done. Now, as far as uh, like Jack Shadow, what, 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 was your, what was your mindset, if you remember? I mean, it was a couple of years ago, but do, do you have any, anything that, that kind of um, 
gave you some guidance there other than our initial conversation? I didn't want him to be a soulless monster, mm -hmm. but I wanted him to have forgotten the humanity he might have been ever, if he had ever been humanity. I wanted that to be a question. Mm -hmm. Because we had discussed the possibility that at some point in time, he may have been closer to this side than the, uh, the right. other side. So I wanted that aspect of, you know, does he remember? Does, you know, would he react differently if these kids now, however many years later, they act differently mm -hmm. than what he expected? So the kids are get changing. I can't imagine what he'd do in today with today's kids. I mean, he'd probably just give up. <laughs> but you know, probably just send them back. <laughs> but there's that Some memory. You know, yeah. he he looks at that. You know, he looks at the children, and he kind of remembers that there might have been a time where he was closer to that sort of humanity. So he tries to be reasonable, mm -hmm. but he's also a monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the spirit of Halloween. Um, yes, yeah, it's. it's it's, it's interesting. Like I said, I, I found it interesting reading it, you know, initially reading it for the first time, thinking, oh, oh boy, I wonder, I wonder what she's going to do with Jack Shadow and, and how, he's gonna, how the kids are going to respond to this and which ones make it and which ones don't. We won't give that away. But, um, um, but it, it, you know, it, it wasn't supposed to be, a, a, you know, a looked at through like a like rainbows and unicorn approach. No. It was a, it had a darker side. In fact, the, uh, I, I, I remember, you know, there was, there was one, one instance where we, we, we kind of had to pull back a little just because I thought, well, I love the story. I, I loved where you took that. Um, but, but I thought, well, you know, maybe we, <laughs> we should, we, you know, maybe change the tracks on, 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 on this little aspect here. But, but, but in saying that, I loved, I loved how menacing it became, you know, yeah. for the kids. <laughs> These kids were not going to, you know, they weren't, they weren't expected by the universe that he, they had been thrown into to survive. Yeah. So whether or not they survived, it was entirely up to them. It was not up to their environment. Yeah. And I love how uh, Jack makes it into a game, <laughs> you know, and, you know, without giving too much away. But I, I just, I love that. Your thought process in, in this whole thing was so creative, you know, you, and I remember actually having a, a, a difference of, of opinion with, with one thing, and, and you, you, you held, you held uh, your guns on that one because I said, well, it takes place in the haunted house. Yes. You know, where I am, you know, of course we know on the TV show and, and stuff, Jackson in, in this castle and that. But you had a neat explanation of that. Do you, do you remember what you were telling me about no. that? Why you chose it? You said that this was more of an American uh, uh, concept, right. not, not the European concept. Like we always envision like the Dracula and Castle Frankenstein and stuff like that. But Halloween was the, um, what, at least our version of it, you know. I, I understand what its origins, but it's an entirely an Americanism. But the trick or treating, yeah. you know, the 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 American is, you know, Americanizing this. It should be a haunted house, yes, and not a castle. And so when you Gothic. explained that to me, I thought, oh, okay, well that makes sense. So it's very much a Victorian era uh, concept. The what we have is Halloween today. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of stick with the Victorian, gothy, you know, the dark stuff, but almost more steampunkish as opposed to you know downright scary castle-y thing mm -hmm. because they don't even celebrate halloween in a lot of parts of europe hmm. it's it's more of just a way to you know spread out some candy and but they don't they don't get into it like we do we we are really kind of vehement about our halloween yeah and how and and how it must be yeah. we like our horror movies we do, we do. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's true though. I mean, you look how seriously some people take Halloween. I mean, having fun with it, but, but it is, it's like the, it's bigger than Christmas. In, in, some, in some places, ways, yeah. You know? And uh, that, that amazes me, you know, haunted houses and horror movies and, uh, you know, this, this little uh, slice of it that 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 we do here with the show you know with honestly i've lived in a lot of places across america and i have to admit like the franklin oil city region they were really gung-ho about their halloween 
Yeah. I mean, the last few times I've been through here, I go trick-or-treating every year. I have missed one year of trick-or-treating. And um, I love wandering the streets and looking what people do. And mm -hmm. this region is definitely like, we love our Halloween, you know? Yeah. There's been other places I've been to and they don't, they don't decorate, they don't do anything, they don't care, you know? So I really like this area for that. Yeah. And I kind of based, <laughs> and I kind of based the re what I was seeing at, on parts of what I've seen wandering around uh, the Van Ango area. Right, yeah. It's a small area, so it's a small town, so it kind of, um, and that's how the, you know, the, the, the story sets, you know, begins in a, in a mm -hmm. kind of a similar setting. So. It does. Yeah. <laughs> I have to admit. <laughs> <laughs> But I may have, I may have looked at 1880 pictures of you know this area and kind of got my my idea of what it would look like. Yeah, but that's kind of what we wanted. We we wanted it uh, kind of a an Oz like uh, you know going from that small town like like Do you know not unlike yep. Dorothy when she you know went from Kansas the the farm on Kansas to to the land of Oz and, and this was like the, your little Norman Rockwell type of uh, small town and then all of a sudden. <laughs> Just like that, it changes. Apparently, yeah. it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I found it. I found it interesting. I, I really enjoyed reading the book, and and uh, I I think if you haven't read it yet, um, it it is available. You can, you can go to Amazon and and, and get that. And There's also a couple of physical copies in um, the Neverending Bookstores, the underground bookstore that's in Franklin. And in, in Franklin, because I uh, there's still a couple a couple copies there. Yeah, and and if if you are interested in in, in getting the book, it's a, it's a very well done book. I mean, it, it really is. I can't say enough about it. But the um, like I said, Jennifer obviously uh, wrote the book. Uh, the cover has been done by uh, Rick Whitlow. He does great, phenomenal work. Rick has done my uh, the Chiller Night uh, logo. He's done my my graphic work for for years on various projects that I've worked on. Uh, Scott Lubin has done the, uh, the illustrations. And the illustrations in the book are incredible. Um, I just, I, I, the whole thing, the, the writing, the illustrations, the cover, I'm very, very impressed and proud of the book. And uh, I just want to <laughs> thank you again for, for, for putting such uh, work into this and, and making it what, it what it turned out to be. You were talking about Halloween being such a big thing here and horror movies being such a big thing. What kind of movies did you like that inspired you to <laughs> I actually don't do watch horror do movies because <laughs> oh, um, I'm empathic. If I see someone oh, get you, hurt you, on you, screen, you I actually get the burn. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually get burned. So it's like, nope, I can't watch. Although Cabin in the Woods was great. Okay. I have to admit that that was the funniest thing that I've ever seen in like forever. That got me laughing so hard. So yeah, I w I'll watch horror movies if they make me laugh, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. But if they're really serious and scary, no, I, I, I can't get into them. Mm -hmm. um, I read a lot of books. Really, the, the Stephen King, I went through the Stephen King section. Um, I, a lot of imagination. I, I've had probably more horrible things happen in my head than what I've seen on screens. Hmm. Sad to say. <laughs> <laughs> You just need to translate that now on, on the paper. This, I think you do a good job at that. This wasn't <laughs> fiction for me. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. was totally living this. <laughs> it, it's, that's a neat, that's kind of a neat thought too. The, the guy who wrote the Polar Express, I can never think of his name, but he said, uh, I remember watching a, a special where he was, uh, or an interview with him, where he said, as weird as it sounds, it seemed more to him like a memory. Yeah than it did a story he was creating. Yes. And I thought that was fascinating, a neat way to look at it. When I was writing that, definitely there was parts where I was definitely, I was living it yeah. and, and trying to get out of it. And that's where the kids were trying to solve the problem. It's like, okay, what would I do? What do I need to do to just get out of this now? And yeah, yeah. That, that's, so when it comes to, yeah. <laughs> So, well, and, and I found myself um, uh, feeling like I was, I was in there with them. Awesome. So you did a great That's job. That's the goal. That is the goal. And, and you the did a great to live job it. at that. Yep. We, I lived it, and, and, I, and I, through their eyes, I saw Jack Shadow 
and I didn't know what he was going to do. I didn't know what he was going to say. And I love that because, you know, some people say I do a pretty good Jack Shadow impersonation. You know, I kind of know that character pretty well, but I didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> so uh, I enjoyed it, and, and I think our viewers would, would enjoy it. So I encourage you, I strongly encourage you to get a copy of Chiller Night, The Spirit of Halloween, and, uh, you know, terrify your children you know, read it to them and so they can drift off and have their nightmares and, uh, <laughs> and they just have fun with it. So um, there's a lot of uh, fun that can be had with, 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 with fright, you know, and the Halloween kind of fear. So, so Jennifer, thank you very much Absolutely. for being on the show. I have had a lot of fun. And thank you for tuning in to Chiller Chat. We'll see you next time. Have a good night. How many times do I have to tell you just because something isn't good doesn't mean it's bad? Oh,